Another day, another beautiful day here in sunny California. You know, it's actually kind of funny because it was raining yesterday. But today it's just, it's just pristine, beautiful. My God, it's gorgeous outside. I can't do this video outside though because you wouldn't be able to t take a good gander at this. This is, I don't know. I actually have no clue what this is. It's made up by a company called Absolute and it's a portable investigator and now, sorry, portable investigator analyzer. It's a desktop. You can see it. You got all the desktop stuff on the side right here. I actually had to change the motherboard because I bought off a guy in Pasadena. There's a power supply. I took the one that was in there already. I uh, replaced it with one that I had. The reason why I did that was because the one that I had was fully modular and the one that was in here was. However, the one that wasn't here had a thousand watts. So I use that on my desktop now. Take a good look at all the stuff on the back. There's one of the case fans. There's another one on the side over there. Absolute. I believe Absolute is a defunct company now because I can't find any information about them online. When I got it from the guy, he said to look up DV Streamline, and I did. And I found the company DV Streamline, but it didn't look similar to what this is. So I think the company is defunct, and maybe some of their assets were picked up by DV Streamline. But anyway, what's so special about this? Why is there a handle on that case? And why is there a giant bag over there? The reason for that is because this is actually the most impressive portable solution to a desktop that I've ever seen. And it's it's bonkers, right? The idea is you can take the case, you can pick it up, carry it with you wherever you want to go, just like that. It's like luggage. Obviously, you want to put it inside that case. Thing weighs a ton. This case is actually pretty nice because it's got a handle right here. And it also has wheels. So it's able to carry it with you. And probably the most unique feature of all is this. Seems like you can it with one hand. Oh my God, won't you look at that. It's a desktop that's portable with a built-in monitor and mechanical keyboard. It's, it's amazing, right? That, that is amazing. Look at that. That is fucking crazy. It's a desktop that you can actually call a laptop almost. It, obviously you wouldn't put this on your lap, so be more like a, just a portable computer. It's really kind of trippy when I first saw it. Uh, the reason why I got this is because my friend, he's a musician, and he told me one day, you know, I really wish I had a computer that was a lot stronger than the laptop that I have. I asked him, oh, uh, what, kind of, what kind of thing are you looking for in a laptop? And he said, well, I want something that's powerful like a desktop, but portable like a laptop. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll look up some stuff. And at first I thought, uh, how about we get him like a, like a P50 ThinkPad? You know, that's perfect for a portable workstation type stuff. Maybe like, at a, like an Elite Book or a Dell Precision. But then I saw this online and I was like, oh, yes. This, this is perfect. This is, this is exactly what he wants because it's a literal portable <laughs> desktop with a giant case to, gi giant, this thing is made out of leather. It's beautiful, like it's, it's dusty and it's dirty and I need to clean it, but look at it, it's huge, it's amazing. You, you can carry it as luggage. It's really, really, really like sturdy too. Like this is, that's a nice strong piece of leather. It's actual leather. And then this is like, this, this material right here is like polyester or some type of nylon. It's got zippers. And, like, I'm like, wow, this thing, this thing came with this. This thing must have been really expensive back in the day because I just got this thing for 30 bucks. So I, the guy was just giving it to me. He also gave me like a CPU and like 16 gigs of RAM. And I think he'll give me like an extra 16. So this thing right now is running 16, but it, in total it should support up to like, I believe 32 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. Uh, the motherboard that's running right now is a super micro motherboard. I believe it's the X7DAE, not the plus variant, just the X7DAE. And that's a dual socketed Xeon. Those things are everywhere. Uh, what's nice about the specific one in this is that it has two, name it, two PCIe slots. The motherboard that came with this originally had 
zero, it had PCI X slots, like a whole bunch of them. And this PCIe, or not PCIe, PCI graphics card, I was like, oh, I can't really use this. So I, I had to switch everything out and trying to fit everything inside this case because it's not particularly thick. It looks thick, but the actual thickness of the case is like from here to about here. This section right here is just for the monitor and the keyboard. If you kind of take a look, the graphics card right here is a GTX 780. Not the most powerful thing in the world, but it's all that I had, most because I, I do the free software thing. So the best graphics card you can get for a free software system is a GTX 780. So that's what I just threw in there. Let's turn it on. So I'm going to need to get the cable that connects to the power supply. Also the adapter, because the monitor only uses VGA and the GTX 780 does not support VGA. It only supports DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. So I, I happen to have an adapter that I'm going to grab right now. So I'll head right here to this case, take it out. It's in this pocket here. Oop. Have this nice little pocket here. Here's the adapter. I believe the power supply cable is here as well. Beautiful. Let's hook it up. I'm going to pause the video real quick while I set everything up because I can't do this with one hand. Howdy dandy, we got everything set up now, correct, nice and right. This this case was actually really difficult to set up. When I was first doing it, I couldn't, I, I ran into so many issues. I couldn't figure out, let's start off from the beginning, right? Number one, it didn't post at all once I set everything up. And the reason why it didn't post is because the CPUs that were installed in there, uh, they were Xeon L5420, uh, I believe. I think they're 1066 megahertz or 1333 megahertz front side bus. The BIOS didn't support it. And I realized that when I swapped the CPUs out for a couple of Xeons that I had that had a slower front side bus and booted. But the issue with those CPUs is that they were both dual core. The motherboard supports dual socketed CPUs. So when I installed the dual core CPUs with, I think it's 166 megahertz. And then the ones that I wanted were the 1333 megahertz. So when I saw those two dual cores, it posted. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's not recognizing the CPUs. So if you ever had to upgrade a BIOS for these old server systems, what you have to do is you have to get a USB. You The USB is bootable into FreeDOS. You plug it into your PC, you boot into FreeDOS, and then you take the updated BIOS that you have to find online somewhere. Thankfully, I did for this system. I took the BIOS, I flashed it, I took the CPUs out, I put the new CPUs in, and it finally posted. But the issue that I was having now was that I couldn't get this stupid display working. So I was trying to figure out why, why am I not able to see anything? The keyboard seems to work, but there was no display. I was only able to get the display on a separate monitor. So how, how does any of this work? It took me an hour, but I realized, oh, I forgot to connect the Molex connector that powered the actual monitor. Because the lights on the side, there's like four lights on the side, are turning on. But none of the lights on the main monitor were working. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm stupid. There's no power being supplied to, to the freaking monitor. No wonder. I'm dumb. So the way that this works is you take this out. It's got this Ethernet adapter here. Focus. Come on. Come on. Ooh, let's do it over here. Focus. There we go. It's got this Ethernet adapter right here. Plugs into that jack port right over there. It's even got the mouse and keyboard symbol on there. Let's plug it in. There we go. So once you do that, the power button is right here. I've never actually used any of these buttons. Never. I believe this is for adjusting resolution, but I think I took the button out of this one, not because I didn't want to have it in there. It's just because it fell out and I was too lazy to replace it. Uh, this is the power button right here. Reset button. This turns the monitor on and off. So if you want to use it as just a strictly dedicated desktop machine, as a strictly dedicated desktop machine, you can just turn the screen off using this, fold this back up, 
and then just have it off to the side and then boom you have like a like a regular desktop which is pretty cool i like that feature and then these are your indicators this is to show that it's on and this is to show that there's uh, io happening with a hard disk we're gonna turn it on now this thing is a is an actual jet engine i mentioned earlier how this is a super micro board so one of the heat sink fans is a Dynatron. It's one of those little 1U Dynatrons that they put in the servers. So if you know anything about Dynatron, those things are meant to be very, very good at keeping things cool. They have an extremely high CCFM, but the CCFM or is it just CFM? <laughs> anyway, those things are very loud, very, very loud. I have another fan in there. I don't think it's as loud as the Dynatron because it's a lot bigger. The heat sink is a lot bigger. But this thing sounds like a jet engine. Also, the case fans are three pins, so they don't have PWM. I think if I wanted to make this thing a little bit quieter, I'd install PWM fans on the case just to make it sound a little bit nicer. Maybe Noctuous. That probably would help out a lot. Anyway, let's turn it on. I can talk about how loud this thing is all day, but you won't really be able to know until I turn it on. I'll put it up a little bit closer. Right now it's pretty loud. I'm sitting pretty far away, but let's get a little bit closer. It's loud, man. Like it's really, really loud. It's booting up right now. There's the system. I'm gonna pause that there, put like a separate frame. So that way people can take a look at it. So it's running Windows 10. I knew that Windows 10 has really good software compatibility with a lot of the stuff that my friend wanted to use, so I decided that this is the way to go. I wanted to install Ubuntu Studio, but I figured that he'd probably need a little bit more Linux tools, uh, but I do plan on dual booting into Ubuntu Studio, so that way he at least has that option. So that way I can start incentivizing people to want to try out Linux. You know, you never want to force Linux on people, you just want to provide them the option. And if they decide to use it, then that's great. This is the uh, modern turn off feature. This thing folds completely up and it does nothing to the thing. It's not gonna shut it down when you lift this thing up. There's no sensor for that. Uh, lifting this thing up, it just locks it back into place. Screen's back on. Almost done turning on. Boot up process is a little bit slow. The hard drive is a 77.2K uh, traditional hard disk drive. Uh, it's actually the hard disk drive that came with the microboard. It was in a separate super micro uh, server chassis. And I just pulled it out and I happened to have it. I wanted to use this one PCIe SSD, but Windows refused to install onto the PCIe SSD. So I was getting very, very annoyed at that. So I just figured, oh, fuck it. I'll just install a traditional hard drive and it should work just fine. Hello, Windows. Good old Windows. This touchpad is very, very small. And the way that you scroll, you can't do double scroll, but it does that traditional thing of where you put your finger to the side and you can scroll like that. Uh, I wish this thing were just, just a tiny bit bigger. Uh, I'm more of a fan of the ThinkPad method of doing it with portable solutions where you have the little nub right there. Uh, just because a lot of these old laptops have these very small squares to work with. Yeah, you're left and right here. But if they made this thing just a little bit better, a little bit bigger, uh, the ergonomics of it would improve a lot. We're at the sign-in screen now. Uh, Collective is a reference to the podcast that my friends and I do. That's the main reason why I wanted to get this for my friend is because he edits the podcast that we record. So he, he needs something a little bit more powerful, a little bit more stable than the laptop that he uses. So this would be a more ideal solution. I'm gonna pause the video right now so we can sign in, get into Windows 10. And we're in. This is Windows 10. It's got a couple of software installed. It's got Chromium, it's got Discord, and it's got Steam. I actually installed everything using Chocolatey. If you don't know what Chocolatey is, you can think of it as a package manager. Shut up, Steam. You can think of it as a package manager for Windows, similar to how a Unix-based system would use a package manager to manage all the stuff that's installed on the system. I prefer the Unix way of handling software installations just because it makes it a lot easier and efficient to install, uninstall, manage the stuff that's installed. 
using Windows software, though, you have to take in consideration the licenses that things use, and and it's just a lot more complicated and a lot less user friendly. But it gets the job done. There's no internet access at the moment, just because I don't have a Wi-Fi in, a Wi-Fi card installed yet. I thought I'm getting one, so that way I don't have to go next to my router and hook up an ethernet cable to get everything working right. This uh, keyboard is actually detachable. The way that you do that is you grab these and you slide it like that. Comes out. Let's see if I can lock it back in. There we go. The touchpad is rather responsive considering it's age. It does take a little bit to move from one side of the screen to the other, but that's pretty slow. But for the most part, wherever I move my finger, it moves to that point. So that's pretty nice. The screen resolution is not particularly high. Let's try and look it up real quick. 1280 by 1024. Oh, is that, is that five by four? I think I'm wrong. Now <laughs> that sucks. Uh, because these are old Xeons, it doesn't really like having to use Windows 10. Uh, Windows 10 is more for like the Core i series type of CPUs. This is pre-Core i, this is more uh, Core 2 Duo era. Let's do Task Manager. And you'll see once we open up the Task Manager that the CPU utilization is somewhere around 10% when I was using it. Here we are. So you can see that the CPU is running somewhere around 10% utilization on average. So a dual socket system has eight cores total, which is perfect if you're trying to do anything music related because you're not really trying to, you're not really looking for clock speeds when you're doing a lot of music related production. You're more looking for cores and especially memory, CPU memory. This thing has a bunch. It has 24 megabytes of L2 cache. That's a huge amount. There's no, there's very few nowadays consumer CPUs that have that much cache, especially L2 cache. That's a high, high number. And that's just how old Xeons were. That's why they were great. You can definitely connect uh, another monitor to, to this. I'm actually gonna do that right now. I'm gonna pause the video, uh, put another monitor like right there and show you what it looks like. And we are back. Here's our separate monitor. I've also hooked up a separate keyboard and mouse just to demonstrate that you can use the machine with it. Here's the mouse. Let me turn that on actually. There we go. Working just fine. Now you notice that they're plugged into the front. You don't actually need to plug it into the front there. I could have just as easily plugged it into the IO ports on the back. This thing has integrated audio, so if you want to hook up a surround system to it, you can actually do it, which is one another one of the things I like about this. Here are the connectors for the uh, keyboard and mouse on this side. So if you wanted to connect the keyboard and mouse and use this as a traditional desktop, you just plug it into the four USB slots there. Four USB slots I think is a pretty decent amount to have. Here's a separate monitor. Here's a demonstration of the keyboard. So I'm just gonna do, the, there you go. I'm just tapping away at that. On the whole. I think this is a pretty pretty nifty thing. I wish that there are a few more manufacturers doing stuff like this at an affordable cost. Maybe not in this form factor because this is definitely built for a specific use case in mind. Maybe something that's just a little bit portable. I know with many ITX cases nowadays, they kind of achieve the same thing, but they're still lacking the portable monitor and keyboard. So maybe someone can dissolve, <laughs> maybe someone can develop something that can address those key issues that we can have like a really truly portable desktop solution. I think that'd be really nifty. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a very wonderful day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry. I was about to end this video without showing you what it looks like on the inside. Intel Xeon inside. I, I, I finished recording the video, the initial part of it, and it's at that point that I realized, oh yeah, I should probably show them show computer people what it looks like on the inside of a computer. But then my phone started dying, so I needed to get the
charger is charging right now to be able to actually record this. So let's just hop right into it. There's a total of, I believe, eight screws. Uh, there's two on each of these sides. What's very cool about these screws, actually, is the fact that they don't completely come out, so it makes it easier when I want to reassemble. I'm actually gonna pause the video right now because doing this with one hand is gonna take a while. All right, it's all opened up. I'm gonna try and open this slowly because the case fan right there has a very short cable connecting it. And it looks hideous, doesn't it? It's it's ugly. It's very, very ugly. Don't give me shit about the cable management, right? Because there's so little space to work with, I had to do something. So the way that it's configured, it's very little. You basically mount the PSU here. Underneath is all the RAM. You can definitely tell this thing was created with Xeons in mind because you can't really fit a CPU heatsink directly underneath the uh, power supply. There's just not enough space. All the Xeons are located right there. And even then, the Xeons don't have too much room because of this stupid thing right here. I could easily take this out, but then it looked a little bit awkward having this giant space right there. But uh, I can make this work how it is right now. So here's the larger fan right there. A little hard to see where it says Intel. And then the super micro fan is right there. You kind of see it's that little kind of heat sink that's uh, jutting out right behind the GPU. This thing right here was meant to carry the CD drive, a floppy disk drive, and an extra five inch drive if you want to install one. Maybe something for fans so that way you can tame the <laughs> Dynatron that's in there. Here are all the slots. So you got the PCIe slot for the GPU, an extra PCIe slot that's right there, and then PCIe-X slots. I believe there's only one PCI slot and it's covered by the GPU right here. It's not a whole lot of space to work with. This fan that's right here and that fan right there are the two case fans. They're rather noisy because they're all three pinned. The thing itself had a lot of parts and I ended up with a lot of screws left over when I was finished taking it all apart. But somehow I managed to fit everything inside there and it does its job. Anyway. That's, that's it. That's finally everything. I hope you all take care.